by Amy Stewart. See, I didn't even remember who it was by because it was very average. This song... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with part 3 out of 4 for my April wrap-up 2021. I read a total of 20 books this month, which is still crazy to me. If you're interested in seeing the other 15 books that I read, I'll leave the links down below to those wrap-ups. But these are the next 5 books that I read for the month, so without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book I have is The Girl in the White Van by April Henry. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I have a whole reading vlog up for this book. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it basically follows a girl named Savannah Taylor who goes missing one day. She is taken to an isolated trailer where another girl named Jenny is being held captive and they form a plan for escape and it's like the story of that. I think I had more fun reading this just because I was doing a vlog for it. It was super duper average. I hated the love interest. His name was Daniel Diaz. The vlog is pretty much just me ripping on him the entire time. I just wanted a book about a kick-ass female who was gonna save herself but it did not happen. The stupid boy came in to save the day and I just wasn't here for it. The book was told in multiple point of views, one of them being the kidnapper which I thought was really interesting. I really liked how the book showed how different people were handling the kidnapping of not only Savannah but also Jenny. Savannah was a likable main character but I definitely did like Jenny more than her. There wasn't really that much happening for the majority of the book. Most of the like action, if you want to call it that, happened in the last 100 pages of the book, but if you're interested to hear like my full thoughts on it, I guess, then watch the vlog because it was actually a lot of fun to read it, but not the best book overall, so 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. Before you comment down in the comments about the controversy surrounding this author, I am aware, do not condone what he did, but I had the book on my shelf. I wanted to read it to see what all the hype was. There's also a Netflix movie coming out very soon about this book, so I wanted to read it before I watched the movie. Besides the point, I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It is about a woman named Anna Fox who lives alone. She also struggles with agoraphobia. Phobia. She spends her days drinking wine and watching the neighbors when new neighbors move in across the street. She witnesses something very troubling and things begin to get a little bit complicated from there and it's like the story of that. I was super disappointed in this book because I was able to call the twist 100 pages in. It's a pretty hefty book, like it's 427 pages long and I was able to call it in 100 pages so that was not the best time for me. Also, I'm a huge fan of unreliable narrators but Anna was just so boring and bland. The pacing was fairly slow, nothing really happened until the last like maybe 50 pages. It was also very predictable. Like I'm not saying it's a bad book, I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. It was fun while I was reading it but I don't think that it was anything like mind-blowing like people say it is. Also, you know, shady author, so... I mean, I'm giving it to the thrift store, but it was fun while it lasted. Three out of five stars. The next book I read was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I gave this a three out of five stars, which was super, super disappointing to me because this is a book that is so ridiculously hyped on booktube. I thought I was gonna love it and I just didn't. It follows a girl named Eliza Merck who created an online webcomic called The Monstrous Sea. She pretty much keeps to herself in school focusing on her drawings. Then she meets Wallace, the new boy in school, who just so happens to be the biggest Monstrous Sea fanfiction writer. As they begin to hang out more, Eliza has to decide whether or not to keep the secret that she is actually the creator to herself or or tell Wallace and it's like the story of that. Like I said, this book is so hyped. I thought I was gonna love it. Didn't end up loving it. Gave it a three out of five stars. I did, however, love the mixed media in this. The drawings were probably my favorite part. I think that they were just so pretty. I don't know where it is, but it's so pretty. Whatever, you get the point. There's pictures throughout it. I really enjoyed the pictures. The writing style was really well done. I liked the flow of it. 
it had a good pacing until the end where it just seemed very rushed. I did like the representation of depression and anxiety in Eliza. I think that it was really well done. I liked Eliza for the most part, but she ended up grating on my nerves a little bit with her attitude. She was just very negative and just kind of like annoyed me for a good chunk of the book, especially when I found out that she was supposed to be 18. I thought she was like 15 or 16, so that kind of sucked. Wallace I liked for the majority of the book until the end of the book, in which case my thoughts and opinions changed completely and I actually despised him and his actions and I just thought he was like super selfish and he just made me really angry. So overall, like it was average, it was okay but the characters really pissed me off, so three out of five stars for this one. The next two books are actually part of the same series and I gave them both two out of five stars. It is Still Mine and Still Water by Amy Stewart. See, I didn't even remember who it was by because it was very average. Both of these books follow the main character, Claire, but on different, like, cases. So Still Mine follows Claire, who is on the run from her abusive marriage. She ends up in a small town called Blackmore, where a young woman named Shayna recently went missing. The townspeople of Blackmore quickly realize that Shayna and Claire have a lot of similarities, and they start wondering why she's come to town asking all these questions and it's like the story of that. I was just immensely bored. There was never really any world building or character backstory. There was just very quick and subtle mentions of things that you were supposed to build this whole character's personality on and I just wasn't a fan of that. We do end up learning a little bit about an event that happened five years ago in the town that caused a rift between the families in the community but that's really all we get about these characters. I just did not care about any of the characters or what was happening to them. I did end up adding a star because I was originally going to give it one star because the ending was at least a little bit interesting so I felt bad because I did enjoy the ending so yeah overall it was not good it was boring i gave it two out of five stars so yeah moving on to the next one in the series which i don't know why i even read it since i hated the first book but i already owned it so stillwater follows claire again but this time she is in a town called high river where a woman named sally and her young son went missing and claire is determined to figure out what happened to them so she infiltrates the battered woman shelter that sally had been staying in and claims to be her friend and she wants answers and it's like the story of that. This book basically picks up right where Still Mine leaves off and I don't really understand how she's just jumping from town to town and just being like, hey, I'm this person's friend, tell me things and people just tell her. Especially since she's in a battered woman shelter, I feel like the woman there would not necessarily trust a random person coming in right away, but this takes place over the span of like a week. And right on the first day when she arrives, people are just like, here's all the information on how to figure out where she went. And it just doesn't make sense to me. I was honestly more invested in a man named Malcolm Boone, who is the person who hired Claire to try to find this woman. I just wanted to know more about him and his backstory because he was far more interesting than Claire. I just did not enjoy these two books, so these two will be going off to the thrift store. I gave this one a 2 out of 5 stars as well. I th honestly think just because I had literally just finished the other book, so I was like, whatever, it's pretty much the exact same story, just different character names. So, 2 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 3 of 4 wrap up for April 2021. I will leave the links to the other wrap ups for the other 15 books down below if you want to check those out. Let me know. If you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!